This video was sponsored by Autodesk Fusion 360. More on that later. Recently, I made a full tutorial on how to make this, a fully 3D printed Antwerp combat robot. This little robot was actually a redesign of FLS, a robot I made over 10 years ago, which actually won its first ever tournament. So you'd think that this bot would kick butt too, right? Well, no, it didn't kick butt. In fact, when I competed with this at the recent Adelaide Robot Havoc event, it totally sucked. And we can't have that. So in this video, I'll show you how I designed and built the best 3D printed Antwerp ever, in my opinion, to regain at least some of my lost dignity. Let's get started. Okay, so if the original robot worked so well, why did this redesign perform so poorly? Well, I think it comes down to a few things. We'll start with the gear motors. I used these oversized gear motors in the hope of getting plenty of pushing power. And to be fair, when I did line up on other robots, they pushed great, but they're so heavy that I had to dramatically reduce the weight of the chassis. If you saw the original tutorial, which you can find here, the first iteration was actually overweight by a fair bit. The Antwerp class we use in Australia could only weigh up to 150 grams, and it turns out that PLA plastic is actually quite dense. These robots must be within their weight to compete, so for the competition, I redesigned it with thinner walls and a much smaller front wedge, which unfortunately means there's a lot less weight in front of the wheels, and the high torque motors combined with the high traction tires just make the thing wheely all the time. This would be bearable if I had fine motor control, but unfortunately the budget electronic speed controller I sourced does not have motor braking. In testing on the heavier chassis, this was annoying, but not too challenging to control. But with this lighter chassis, there's literally no control. The motor's torque isn't linear, so once you give it enough juice, the bot just spins out of control in any random direction. Words cannot begin to describe the frustration of driving this robot. Suffice to say, it lost pretty much all of its fights. Plastic Ants, the class that this was built for, aren't destructive as such, but the arena has a pit, and this thing always found itself down it. Okay, time for a new design. I want a robot that's easy to control, has tons of pushing power, and has some kind of weapon to control the opponent, and push them into the pit, and not myself. I really like James's plastic ant, which uses belts to slave not two, but three wheels to one gear motor for increased traction in a low profile design. And he had this really nifty clamper lifter weapon, which worked fantastically and reminded me of one of my childhood favorite battle bots, Biohazard. Before kinetic energy spinning weapons became the meta in battle bots, Biohazard was one of the most effective control bots out there, with a really low profile design and a hugely effective lifting arm. The way the arm works is really clever, and I've always wanted to make one, so here's my design concept. This robot uses two small gear motors to drive a low profile four wheel drive platform and defends itself with a four bar lifting mechanism driven off a Metal Gear servo. Like I mentioned in my previous tutorial, the best way to start designing is to just go grab some grid paper and literally arrange and trace around your components to get an idea of layout before moving to 3D modeling. But it's a really great way to reality check the size and weight of your design, but once you're happy, it's time to fire up Fusion 360 and design this bad boy. If you're a long-term subscriber on Maker's Muse, then you'll know I've been using Fusion 360 literally since it was released by Autodesk and over the years, they've added more and more features, turning it into the 3D modeling workhorse it is today. So it's pretty cool to have them sponsoring this video. Fusion 360 is a cloud-based 3D modeling, CAD, CAM, CAE, and PCB software platform for product design and manufacturing. Yeah, it does a lot. With a background in industrial design, I really took to Fusion 360's design workflow, which allows you to capture design history as you model. Let me show you. This is the chassis for my new 3D printed Antweight, and it's built up of sketches and features. I can go back into any of these, let's go with this extrude for example, and change it. Hit OK, and bam, the whole assembly updates. How cool is that? But again, Fusion 360 isn't just for CAD. I can render my design, or I can move over to the CAM workspace to manufacture my parts, or 3D print them using the built-in slicer. You can also do CAE simulations before you even make the parts. And 
heaps more. So if that sounds awesome, then why not give Autodesk Fusion 360 a go? Follow the link in the description below for a free trial and full disclosure, although Autodesk is sponsoring this video, I actually pay for my own personal Fusion 360 license and have done so for several years. I genuinely find huge value in it as a professional level CAD ecosystem and I highly recommend Give me it a go. Now it's time to deep dive into the design because there's a few things that took a bit of tweaking to get right. Let's start with the lifting arm. Like the arm in Biohazard, this uses what's known as a four bar linkage to transfer rotary movement from the servo to a lifting action at the end of the arm. Four bars are incredibly versatile linkages and have been used for hundreds of years to creatively convert motion using four rigid bodies or bars connected in a loop by four joints, which can freely rotate. I find four bars fascinating because of the sheer range of output movements possible simply by changing the length ratios of each of the four bars. A four bar linkage can copy an input using a parallelogram. They can create a rocking motion from a rotary input or even approximate straight line motion at the output as in the case of the Chebyshev linkage. I really hope I pronounced that right because he even designed this awesome walking mechanism around it that I would love to make one day. But anyway, I digress. For a lifter, I wanted a kind of scoop and flip motion out of my four bar linkage. And while there's a ton of maths involved, I didn't do any. Instead, I used Fusion 360's sketch workspace to assign lengths and fixed points to lines and just played with dimensions until I was happy with the resulting movement. This is actually a really neat way of playing with linkages before committing to assemblies with joints later in the design process, and it's really fast for prototyping. Most joints are joined together with wooden dowel with the arms sliding into place. I was gonna use a fiberglass rod, but it's not really fun to cut, and again, the plastic ant weight class is a lot less destructive than its unrestricted counterpart, so the dowel should work fine. I did use some wire for size reasons on the servo arm and the bottom of the lifter bar linkage, and that just simply pushes into place with a kink in it to stop it from falling out. So we've got a good way of controlling the opponent, but how about pushing them around? Well, that's where these come in. I thought for ages about the easiest way of creating a miniature high traction wheel where one gear motor could drive two wheels, but then realized that these charity wristbands are actually the perfect miniature high traction tank tread. They're made of flexible silicon and have a tiny bit of stretch, so why not stretch them around two wheel hubs? You might be wondering, what stops them from falling off? And well, at first, I'll be honest, I did try a flat hub with flanges at the edges, but it didn't work as expected. And that's when I discovered the magic of crowned pulleys. Way back during the Industrial Revolution, they found the need to transfer torque from one place, usually a stationary steam engine built into the building, to machines dotted around it. And before V-belts had even been invented, these machines relied on flat belts, usually made from canvas or leather. But how the heck do you keep a flat belt on track on a flat pulley? The solution is genius, but a bit counterintuitive. You crown them. A crowned pulley has a slight taper from center to edge, where the largest diameter is in the middle. This is pretty odd because you would think that as the belt rotates, it will just slip further and further down one side and it eventually simply fall off. But that's not what happens. As the pulley rotates, the higher section stretches the belt more, which creates higher tension. This results in the belt forming a slight arc, which actually makes the belt wind itself up and back onto the center of the pulley. It's effectively self-centers. The more aggressive the taper is, the quicker the belt will wind itself up, but even a gentle taper will work, or as in the case of my design, a slight curve. Pretty neat, hey? You only need to use it on one side, but considering the use case as a tank tread, I've done it on both, and I'm pretty confident the belts won't fall off during combat. For drive, I chose these tiny N20 gear motors with a 50 to one reduction. You can make ant weights go really fast with a lower reduction, but I found with my previous design that fast isn't always better. So with this robot, I want good controllability so I can line up on my opponents easier and not just blast straight into the pit. And for that good control, I'm definitely gonna need a different speed controller because I need motor braking. So unfortunately, that cheaper ESC isn't going to cut it. This is a prototype dual ESC from BotBits and offers onboard mixing, BEC, power light, and most importantly, motor braking. And it's absolutely tiny. I'll put a link in the video description if you're interested. And 
That's about it. The chassis has a ton of design considerations for component mounts, like where the battery sits, and it was shelled to 1.2 millimeters, which is about as thin as I would trust going on an FFF 3D printer. Again, using design history, I can just go back and change the shell thickness if I find it being a bit too flimsy, but without the way, let's print it out. Under the manufacturing tab, Fusion 360 has a fully functional 3D printing slicer. So all you need to do is select the printer you're using, as well as slicing settings. I changed mine slightly to 0.2 millimeter layer height and three perimeters. Then you arrange all the components you want to print and generate the toolpaths. If you're coming from 3D printing and want to learn more about the CAM workflow, it's a really good introduction and there's tons of tutorials available. I printed all my parts at a PLA Plus, which is plenty tough for this application and really easy to print. So let's put it together. I'm really happy with this new little plastic ant weight. It's so much easier to control than the previous one and much more effective thanks to the four bar linkage with lifting arm. I unfortunately did have to use a plastic geared servo because my metal geared one was dead for some reason, but for yours, I do recommend a good metal geared one for durability for sure. But it still needs a name. So what do you think we should call it? I think the arms look a little bit like a spider waiting to strike but I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments below. The charity wristband tracks work so good, at least in testing, they have so much traction and I cannot wait to see how this bot goes in the next competition, which should be late November in Brisbane. Watch this space and be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss it. And hey, if you like this design, you can make your own. I've released the Fusion 360 model as well as all the STL files for 3D printing for free. Links below and you can also find a link to download a free trial of Fusion 360, which I highly recommend checking out. This design and honestly most of the content on my channel would not be possible without Fusion 360, so I really do appreciate them sponsoring this video here on Maker's Muse, where it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. Thanks for watching guys, bye.